Okay, so today what you guys are going to be doing is enzyme catalysis, right? Okay, you already said we're working with amylase, the substrate is starch, the product is maltose. Where do you find amylase? In the body. In your mouth. In your mouth. In your mouth. Right? From saliva. your saliva, in right? Your mouth. And it's used to break down starch and carbohydrates so they're easier to digest, and then you can utilize those sugars such as maltose for energy. Okay? So in today's reactions, what you're going to be doing is several things. One, you're going to be generating a standard curve simply by measuring the concentration of how much starch is being broken down over a certain period of time, okay, with the enzyme amylase. Okay? So how are you going to be measuring the starch levels? What else are we using today? What chemical? Acid. We are using hydrochloric acid, but not for that. What's the dye that we're using? The potassium iodide, remember? So potassium iodide is a light sensitive dye that will turn and your solution blue. And depending on how much starch molecules are left, it will turn either a darker blue or a lighter blue. So potassium iodide is going to bind to any starch that's remaining, okay? So then using your spectrophotometers, right, like we've been using from beginning, you're going to only focus and measure the absorbances, okay? And from the absorbance, you're gonna to try to figure out how many migs of starch or milligrams of starch are left in solution, okay? Then on the other side, if I do a pan around, that's where I put my music. Okay. So now what you're gonna be doing also is testing the effects of enzymes and how they work versus temperature and pH levels. So if you have a pH that's low, what does that mean for the hydrogen concentration? It's hot. Right? So a pH of 4 or 5 means there's a much more higher hydrogen concentration in that solution. Okay? You're going to see how pH 4 and 5 affect the enzymes and how they function and how they work. Also pH 8 and 9, so where you have even a low or a higher hydrogen concentration. Okay? Temperature also affects enzymes. So enzymes are made up of what? What are enzymes? Proteins. Essentially proteins, right? And proteins, their building block is what? Amino acids. Amino acids. Good. Okay. So if you uh, put your enzyme or any protein under high heat above body temperature, what happens? Denaturation. Denaturation, right? It's going to unravel. It's going to break apart. So essentially, that's what you're going to be looking at as well. So you're going to be using these different water baths, 35 degrees, 50 degrees, all the way up to a maximum of 70 degrees. Okay. These are all Celsius. And the idea here is to see is that as you increase the temperature, does your enzyme start to function faster or does it start to denature and slow down? Okay? So that's what you're going to be doing. Now in order to do this ex these exercises, because there's four basically, we're going to split the class. The first two exercises, your standard curve, your time course, you work as a table. Okay? Then we're going to split the class for 3A and 3B. So the front rows are going to do the pH. And the back rows, you're going to be doing the temperature. So then make sure you switch your results. Okay? So that's that. Okay? All the equipment you need is uh, before you. The water baths, one and two will take you some time, so the water baths will warm up accordingly. Um, amylase is already here. It's in these tiny 1.5 Eppendorf tubes. You won't need these till exercise two, I believe. Okay? Potassium iodide, light sensitive, wrapped up in foil, keep it cold starch and your phosphate buffer six which everyone is going to need for all exercises is already here for you okay you must wear gloves because today we are working with hydrochloric acid as Aaron pointed out and hydrochloric acid is extremely acidic it's very dangerous okay it is going to smell a little bit and what i recommend is whoever is handling it doing the pipetting that it's going to tell you to pipette one mil so a thousand microliters of solution of the hcl into your test tubes Dial it down to 500 microliters on your micropipetter and use it twice. That way you prevent any excess splashing or sucking up. Okay? And if you feel like your neighbor is a little bit shaky at times, because some people, you know, <laughs> tend to shake a little bit more than others, okay, then you might want to wear goggles, either you, the shooter, or ideally your lab partners. Okay? So that's what you're going to be doing today. So to start things off for exercise one, I want at least one person per table to come up to the sink, collect, I think you need six test tubes, 
Everyone else, start reading through the protocol and do what you need to do. Okay? That's it.